Hi, my name's Lee Smart. I'll be reading from The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, the short story, The Red-Headed League. I had called upon my friend, Miss Sherlock Holmes, one day in the autumn of last year and found her in deep conversation with a very stout, florid-faced elderly lady with a fiery red hair. With an apology for my intrusion, I was about to withdraw when Holmes pulled me abruptly into the room and closed the door behind me. You could not possibly come at a better time, my dear Watson, she said cordially. I was afraid that you were engaged. So I am, very much so. Then I can wait in the next room. Not at all. This lady, Miss Wilson, has been my partner and helper in many of my most successful cases, and I have no doubt that she will be of the most utmost use to me in yours also. The stout lady half rose from her chair and gave a bob of greeting with a quick little questioning glance from her small, flat, encircled eyes. Try the settee, said Holmes, relapsing into her armchair and putting her fingertips together, as was her custom when in judicial moods. I know, my dear Watson, that you share my love of all that is bizarre and outside the conventions and humdrum routine of everyday life. You have shown your relish for it by the enthusiasm which has prompted you to chronicle, and, if you'll excuse my saying so, somewhat to embellish so many of my little adventures. Your cases have indeed been of the greatest interest to me, I observe. You will remember that I remarked the other day, just before we went into that very simple problem presented by Mr. Mark Sutherland, that for strange effects and extraordinary combinations, we must go to life itself, which is always far more daring than any effort of the imagination, a proposition which I took the liberty of doubting. You did, Doctor, but nonetheless you must come round to my view, for otherwise I shall keep on piling fact upon fact on you until your reason breaks down under them and acknowledges me to be right. Now, Miss Jobeth Wilson here has been good enough to call upon me this morning and to begin a narrative which promises to be one of the most singular which I have listened to for some time. You have heard me remark that the strangest and most unique things are very often connected not with the larger but with the smaller crimes and occasionally indeed where there is room for doubt whether any positive crime has been committed. As far as I have heard it is impossible for me to say whether the present case is an instance of crime or not but the course of events is certainly among the most singular that I have ever listened to. Perhaps, Miss Wilson, you would be kind, you would have the great kindness to recommence your narrative. I ask you not merely because my friend Dr. Watson has not heard the opening part, but also because the peculiar nature of the story makes me anxious to have every possible detail from your lips. As a rule, when I have heard some slight indication of the course of events, I am able to guide myself by the thousands of other similar cases which occur to my memory. In the present instance, I am forced to admit that the facts are, to the best of my belief, unique. The portly client puffed out her chest with an appearance of some little pride and pulled a dirty and wrinkled newspaper from the inside pocket of her greatcoat. As she glanced down the advertisement column with her head thrust forward and the paper flattened out upon her knee, I took a good look at the woman and endeavoured, after the fashion of my companion, to read the indications which might be presented by her dress or appearance. Thank you.